So it's Match Masterclass time again, and if you want to learn more about pellet fishing, then this is gonna be the video for you. Right, okay, so on to pellet fishing. And finally, the weather has warmed up slightly. Temperatures have risen, even the flowers have come out. It's a proper time of year, and it indicates that spring is here, which hopefully means the fishing gets better and we can look to catch a few more fish. So if you're like me, you cannot wait for it to get really warm and catch more fish, hit that like button, just so I can see how many of you prefer it when these temperatures get a little bit warmer. But what it does mean is we can get onto pellet fishing, which for me is the best bait in spring. But there's certainly a particular way you need to feed it and approach it to get the best out of your session. So hopefully that's what I'm gonna show you today. But what I'll do is briefly touch on the baits, just so we know exactly what we've got. Now I'm going to start off with micro pellets. All I've done, a bag of fishery micro pellets, cover them in water up to the same level as the pellets and then just leave them. They do go a little bit damp, but they're not going around a method feed or anything. And actually having slightly damp pellets makes them sink better and it's just really good for fishing on the pole. I have got a little flavouring in the water just because I think fishery pellets can be a bit boring and you want to be a bit different, then that's worth it. Next, I've got some standard four mil pellets. Again, these are fishery pellets. I haven't soaked these. These make a little bit more noise, they're a little bit bigger, and they may come into play later in the session. I'll talk you through why we've got those later. And then as hook bait, I've just prepared myself last night some standard expander pellets. Again, on those, we've got the pellet soak. So what I've gone for is a swim stim pellet soak in the F1 flavour. Like I said, I just think it makes things a little bit more different from perhaps people either side of you. And then it's not really warm enough yet to get onto banded pellets. So that's not going to come into play probably in this video. But what I said there is how you feed it and how you start your session when pellet fishing, certainly in spring, really is important. So you'll notice on the end of my kit here, I've got a toss pot, but on top of there, I've got a sprinkle pot. Sprinkle pot basically is some sort of obstruction in the top of the pot, I meaning your pellets don't all come out in one go. So what I'm going to do to kick off my session, I'm going to fish micros. I'm going to fill my pot up just to about half. That's going to be enough for the initial feed. And then I'm going to get out there and talk you through how we're doing it. So hook bait wise, let's slip on an expander and we will get out there and hopefully we're going to show you a few fish today. So let's get there. Now we've got double shipping day. We've got a lake behind us. So if you're wondering why I'm breaking down twice, that's the reason. But take your time when you're shipping out. It can be awkward, certainly if you're not used to pole fishing. You, you find yourself bumping a few pellets out, but that sprinkle lid and the extra wetted pellet, they do stay in there quite well, to be honest. So just take your time, and then we're gonna ship out to our chosen area. So I've plumbed up to dead depth. I've picked my far bank marker. And what I'm gonna do now is now I'm out there, I'm just gonna turn the pole over. It's really windy. I'm just gonna tap in 10 to 15 pellets and then lay my rig over top of it. Wow, it is really windy. But what that's now doing is creating noise and hopefully it's drawing in any fish that are in the area into my peg. It's not putting too much bait in, you can feel your way into it, but rather than just putting a big pot of pellets in, dumping it in, in one go and hoping that you're gonna catch fish. I mean, obviously you will, but certainly this way is you're trying to maximize your attraction and that's what the sprinkle pot is doing. It's making noise, it's making a little rain of pellets and that could be the key to a few more bites. So basically you repeat, oh, there we go, bite straight away. Basically you repeat that process every, let's say 45 seconds to a minute, you would turn that pole over, re-tap some pellets in, and just create another bit of attraction. More noise, more bait falling through, hopefully means more attraction. But what it can do, now this is where we're gonna to have to feel our way into the session. This is why I don't put too much bait in to start with. Because it is so attractive and you're tapping in, making that noise, you can get too many fish into your peg. Now that, that sounds silly, doesn't it? Too many fish into your peg, how can that be possible? But what it does create is it creates weird bites. It creates liners, foul hookers, stuff like that. Really not good fishing situation. And if you're in that situation, what you need to do is you need to change to putting them in one go and sneaking them in. So that's what we'll talk you through later in the session, I would imagine, because there's so many fish in here. 
I'd imagine that's what's going to happen. It's going to create such a good feeding reaction, we're eventually going to have too many fish in the peg. So what I'll do is I'll concentrate on getting this one in and then we'll repeat that process and just show you again. But it's putting up a bit of a fight this one. So let me take my time, get this one in. And we're going to have the first fish to show you. We'll take that for a start. Nice little carp, to be honest with you. We did expect to be a few fish here because we had a little sneaky little bit of information that the match was won here the other day. So hopefully it was going to be a few fish here, but here we go. Look at that. We calm down for a first fish. It was going to let me hold them up. There we go. Wicked. That's the perfect start. Hopefully calm down. a few more of those is definitely going to be on the cards. So what we'll do is we'll get that one put back send him on his way and then we will try and repeat that so that probably was enough time of them pellets being tapped in to make a little bit of noise and attract it down to the bottom and hopefully the few pellets that were left there as we emptied the pot to start with I hope there's a few left so there could potentially be another fish already waiting for us but again we're going to fill about halfway between the pots I mean, you can just size your pot to how many fish you think you're gonna catch. I mean, you could use a bigger pot if you really thought that you were gonna catch loads and loads of fish, but I would be wary with that in the fact that you don't wanna overfeed them. I always say in every single episode I ever do, you can always take, sorry, you can always put bait in, but you can't take bait out. So if you've overfed somewhere, you've ruined your swim and you might have to, move either three or four meters to the right or left or just change up what you're doing so right let's try and repeat that again so we're going to turn the pot just to halfway little tap on the pole and you can see it raining in those pellets that's the noise that we want to create and basically i would carry on fishing like this until i had issues the issues i'm talking about is what we mentioned earlier, when you're getting too many bites, too many liners, too many fish in your peg. Oh, got a little liner there. I'm just gonna re-tap a few more pellets in. You need to remember every time you're tapping some pellets in, don't just hold your pot facing downwards because all your movements on your pole, certainly when it's windy like it is now, all of those movements are gonna cause pellets to come out. So you are just gonna to have to keep Oh, another liner. So already we may be finding ourselves attracting a few too many fish. Let's tap a few more in. But I would be happy doing this for certainly the first 20, 30 minutes. Feel your way in. See what you think's happening. How many fish you're getting into your swim. And it's the perfect way to kick off a pellet fishing session. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to fish away for a little bit. Try and catch a few fish. And then if anything changes, we will talk you through what we change and how we feed it. And then also we're gonna have a look at that rig. So let's catch a few more and then we'll catch up in a little bit. Well, that was a nice flurry of fish to start with. So while I'm out of the water, I may as well talk you through the rig. It is quite simple. It's probably the same as 90% of my, let's say bottom fishing. When you're fishing on the deck, this is the rig that I'm pretty happy and pretty confident with. So we'll start here at the hook end. We've got quite a small size 16 hook. Could up that slightly if the fish were a bit bigger because you are burying it inside an expander most of the time. So I would advise probably using the biggest hook you can to make it bury inside the expander. And then I've got a short four inch hook link. That's 012 and so is the main line. And the shotting pattern 
is like the strung out bulk is what we call it because you're trying to create a nice curve in your rig certainly today it's really frustrating because it's really windy so i like to just make this is quite positive all down the bottom third of your rig and you slowly taper it a little bit closer so as your shot gets ever so closer to your hook that gap between the shot decreases each time and that creates a lovely curve when you lay your rig in the water so that's pretty much how i shot most of my pole rigs in 90 percent of my fishing pole float wise i've got a 4x14 potentially because it is so windy i could up that to a 4x16 but in about four foot of water 4x14 is normally spot on and it's got a wire stem that is because i want to get the bait down i want to hold it stable I want to keep it where it is. You'll notice I'm not really lift and dropping. The only time I'm ever moving my float is if the wind blows me out of the way and I have to reset the rig. But it's quite positive. Set your trap, feed over the top of it and fish it nice and stable. And then two incredibly important shot above my float. They're obviously called back shot. I use them all of the time when I'm fishing on the bottom. With it being so windy today, trust me, if you weren't using back shot, it'd be a nightmare. They keep your rig so stable because they will actually be an anchor point. So your pole moving around, these are going to take a lot of the buffer out of the movement and your rig is going to sit nice and still. If you're not using back shot, trust me, you need to on most of your fishing. That comes on to orange slick elastic. I think this is 12 to 14, but it's perfect for the size of the fish that we're catching today. So there you go. It's nothing complicated. And like I said, it's pretty universal, that rig. Whenever I am fishing a stable bait and I want to hold it in position, that is what I will use. So I'm going to carry on with exactly what we're doing, if I'm honest. I'm going to put some bait in the toss spot and we're going to sprinkle that over the top of where we're fishing. It hasn't attracted too many fish at the moment. I'm getting consistent bites rather than getting all sorts of weird indications. So that's well worth just carrying on with. One little tip, if you do struggle when you're shipping out with pellets in your toss spot, if they're bouncing out, if you just dunk your pellets or your pot under the water, that will then stop those pellets from bouncing out. So there's a good little tip for you. If you haven't um, ever dried that, just get that little bit of water in your pot and they sort of suction to the bottom of the pot so you can be a lot more rough when you're shipping out and that will keep them in the pot a lot better. So. Here we go, we're back out to the spot. It's nice that sun's come out, it's so much warmer when it's out. I'm gonna tap in a little sprinkling of pellets and I'm gonna lay my rig over the top of that. And then this is where I was saying about, I'm not trying to move it at all really. I'm setting the trap, I'm holding my back shots upwind to try and make that as an anchor point of my float. And I'm just leaving it there, hopeful of getting a bite in. Like I said, it's been pretty consistent. I've got no reason to change it. I'm gonna carry on fishing like this, certainly for the next few minutes until anything changes. I'm gonna keep repeating that process. And so there we go, we're getting blown all over the place, but it's every 45 seconds, something like that. Oh, missed a little bite there. Just gonna reset that trap, lower her in. A few more pellets. Tap, 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 and there we go. We are fishing again. So there we go, there's the rig. Talk through the reasons how you fish it. Like it's nice and stable, that's the main thing. Should keep you catching consistently fishing in this way. Well, what an eventful little fishing section that was. We had true British springtime weather. The heavens absolutely open and it really, really rained. Fished on through that, just doing what we were doing, tapping a few pellets in here and there and just having a steady run of fish, to be honest with you. But then since then, the wind dropped and 
the fishing just went a bit funny. So what I thought I'd do is I'd, I'd put an extra section on and then the last three or four fish, including this one, we just caught a section further. So I think basically they just backed off a little bit, but the good thing about this way of fishing is you never really commit to a peg. You're only tapping a few pellets in here and there. So you're never too worried about moving it. Oh, popped up right in front of me. That face should have paid attention, should I? But yeah, you're never too worried about moving. There we go, another little football mirror. Cracking little fish. They're way heavier than they look because they're just so solid. But we've had loads of these, plenty bigger than that as well. It's been really good. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get this one slipped back and then we'll talk you through the next style of how I'd fish it. Now, in all honesty, I wouldn't do this today. Because this is working, just tapping in the odd pellet here and there, it's been absolutely fine. There's no need to change. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the sprinkle lid. And basically, if you're in a situation you're getting too many bites, too many liners, foul hooking fish, stuff like that, you then need to change, rather than making noise, you need to, what I class as like sneaking the pellets in. So what I do is I make a little ball of pellets. I don't nip that ball very hard. I mean, that'll break down before it hits the bottom and that just rests inside the cup. Now, what I'm gonna do with that is I'll show you in the fishing situation. What I'm gonna do is sneak that in and make absolutely no noise of it. So if you were in a situation where you had loads of fish there, you feel like your attraction is high enough and now your next mission is to try and get those fish to feed tight on the deck where you're fishing and try and create a better feeding reaction rather than foul hooking them and stuff like that, then this is the way forward. So most pole cups now allow water to come in from the bottom of the cup. So all you need to do, take your time shipping out because I have only rested that ball in there. It's not in there too tight. Basically, once you go out to your fishing spot you're going to pick your marker the same as we've just been fishing there really and i'm just going to dunk that cup underneath the water give my pole a little tap and that water flushes it out and that now goes down in a little ball by the time it gets to the bottom it would almost be broken up but now that's what's to happen is i've fed a fair bit of bait you know it's a little ball of micro pellets with literally no noise so i'm still creating some feeding response because I'm still putting bait in my peg. You have to feed, it's obviously so important. But what I am trying to do in a situation, if I was in that, where I'm getting loads of bites that I'm not connecting with, I'm now trying to pin them down into one spot into feeding hard where I want them to feed. So it's worth thinking about and just having the second option because you don't always get days like, oh, missed a little bite there. You don't always get days like we've had today where just a little sprinkle and pellets in has worked from start to finish. And I think that was gonna be better because it's attracting just the right amount of fish. We're getting a bite, no problems, and we're catching. But this has certainly many times got me out of trouble where I just couldn't commit those fish in one spot. So let's see how we get on with this. We'll fish away for the next little bit, see if this makes a difference, if it's worse, if it's better, and then we'll see what we're gonna to change to and finish up. Well, that's a couple of fish on the sneaking pellet method, should we say, but we're definitely waiting longer and noise seems to be the way forward today. There's just not quite enough fish there for me to need to be stealthy and get some bait in. The more sort of noise I make, the more difference it's actually achieved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add on this sprinkle lid again, pop that back on. And I mentioned them earlier, I have got some four mils. So I'm just gonna fill this pot here with a few four mils and what they do is just make a little bit more noise now i would probably say 80 percent of the time i find micros are better but i do just have them there just in case that noise is the key factor or as well if you find yourself in a situation where you were catching load of small f1s or roach becoming an issue because you're feeding micros 
then just by doing the little tapping method with four mils, you can get around that and try and catch a few carp again. So we're, we're literally repeating the same process. We're going back out to our marker and then we're just gonna swivel the pole around and just tap in, I don't know, 10 or 15 four mils, give it 30 seconds, repeat the process and just try and make a little bit more noise with them and see if they make a difference. I'm probably only gonna fish on for another half an hour probably, try and catch a few more fish in this way. Whether the four mils are gonna make a difference or we'll go back to the micros in what I think is probably the best way of doing this, that's still yet to see. But I'll fish away for half hour, we'll try and catch a few more fish to finish with and it's been a pretty good day, I must say. There we go. <laughs> that didn't take very long. Maybe the four mils are the way forward. Maybe I've fished that whole day and I've missed a bit of a trick, but you never know unless you try it, do you? So let's get this one in. And there we go. Off, uh, I'm going to eat my words there, aren't I? Because I said it doesn't attract the F1s. You're more likely to catch a carp, but we've gone and caught an F1. Never mind, it's still a bite. It came to the noise. It was so much quicker than when we were potting in and sneaking them in there. So that's definitely the way to go. Let's have another little spell of fishing and see if we can finish with a bit of a bigger one. And that is gonna be the last fish. The last sort of half an hour has been absolutely mega. Literally a fish of chuck. As soon as you put a bit more noise back into the equation and a little carp to finish on. Wicked little scale pattern. One for the future. Wee, calm down. But it has been a really good day and hopefully it has showcased you that now pellet fishing is really gonna come into own. It's gonna get better and better but feeling your way in like I did today, one of those three different styles that I've talked to you through will definitely work. So get out there and give it a go. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have hit that like button, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. And we will see you again shortly for another Match Masterclass.